Hello, I'd like to talk about uh, Father Sergius Bulgakov, who is really an emerging theological uh, giant uh, of modern Christianity and, and modern orthodoxy. Uh, the originality and scope and range of his theological writings uh, are really quite breathtaking. About 25 books by Father Sergius Bulgakov, some 4,800 printed pages, uh, have been published in English translation. Yet Bulgakov's theology is little known and appreciated in theological circles, both Orthodox and Western. I'll say a few words about Bulgakov's life, uh, who was born in 1871 in Russia, the son of a priest, but he lost his faith during his studies at a theological seminary, uh, turned to Marxism, and by the 1890s had become a leading Marxist philosopher and economist. Around 1900, he had doubts about Marxism and gradually returned to Christianity. He became an important Orthodox uh, intellectual and was ordained a priest in 1918. He was exiled from the Soviet Union in 1922 and lived first in Prague and then in Paris. He was a dean and professor of dogmatic theology at the Saint Sergius Orthodox Theological Institute in Paris until his death in 1944. Bulgakov was an active ecumenist, especially in dialogue with the Anglican Church and in international ecumenical meetings with Protestant churches as well. Bulgakov's most daring and controversial idea was divine Sophia or divine wisdom. He and other theologians of the time uh, put forward divine Sophia as a means of uh, elucidating how God interacts with the world. Divine wisdom, which is sometimes portrayed as an angel-like person, and there are several icons uh, of this kind of representation, is to be taken as a divine quality by which God reveals himself in creation, including humans. But critics consider that this notion of divine wisdom involves a blurring of the distinction between God as infinite, uncreated, and eternal, and creation as a finite and limited, created and with a beginning. Critics accuse Bulgakov of confusing God and creation, a philosophy known as pantheism. Bulgakov defended himself against this accusation, and most commentators now recognize that Bulgakov was not a pantheist, even if certain elements of his theology could be interpreted in this way. So I'd like to speak briefly about uh, five theological areas where Bulgakov's influence is most visible. The first is another way of considering his theology of divine wisdom. Bulgakov also placed his thinking about how God relates to the world within a philosophical notion called panentheism, meaning literally all in God. Bulgakov emphasizes God as creator, as both beyond and independent of creation, that is transcendent to creation in technical terms, while at the same time God is in creation and creation is in God. Nothing can exist apart from God and all created beings are constantly sustained by God and hence somehow in God. So Bulgakov explicitly called his theology panentheist. Other modern Orthodox theologians also identify themselves as panentheists, including the late Metropolitan Council Swear and Father Andrew Louth. Second area of theological importance for Bulgakov is the theology of the human person, or personalism. Bulgakov and other Russian thinkers applied the notion of person to human existence. Their starting point was the biblical and patristic teaching that humans are made in the image of God. Just as God exists as three persons in one divine nature, so humanity exists as a multiplicity of persons in one human nature. Bulgakov affirmed the uniqueness and hence the absolute value of each human person. 
He applied the theological understanding of divine personhood and love as the foundation of intra-Trinitarian relationships to human existence. Bulgakov and his friend, the philosopher Nikos Berdyaev, distinguished between individual and person, whereas individual emphasizes humans in isolation from each other's, the person truly exists only in relation with other persons. This theology was taken up by Bulgakov's younger compatriot, Vladimir Lossky, notably in Lossky's classic book, The Mystical Theology of the Eastern Church. And it was through Lossky that this theology of human existence found its way into Greek theology, especially in the philosopher Christos Yanaras and the theologian Metropolitan John Zizulas. This theology of the human person is one of the most powerful aspects of modern Orthodox theology. So Bulgakov was a key link in this golden chain of theology, stretching from the mid-19th century to the present day. The third area that I want to talk about is the theology of the church. Bulgakov inherited and strongly advanced the notion of the church as being above all a community of the faithful and not only a visible human institution run by clergy. All of the members of the church constitute the body of Christ following the metaphor of St. Paul. For Bulgakov, membership in the church of Christ is not limited to Orthodox but includes all Christians and indeed all humanity. And even further, in some of his writings, Bulgakov extends the notion of the kingdom of God to all creation and not just parts of it. This universal view of the church provides a theological foundation for care for the planet and for all of God's creation. And this underpins orthodox thinking on the environment, climate change and protection of all forms of life, such as the recent International Agreement on Biodiversity. The fourth area that I want to talk about is social and political theology. Bulgakov, like many of his generation who returned to the church after a period as, of, as Marxists, retained a sharp sense of the social responsibility of Christians. This concern for others flows in particular from the second gospel commandment, love your neighbor as yourself and also from Christ's example in healing the sick and feeding the hungry, and from Christ's admonishments to help others in the parable of the Last Judgment. Bulgakov wrote several essays on this subject, and he strongly supported the charitable undertakings of Mother Maria Skopsova, who's now canonized as Saint Maria of Paris. Theologians after Bulgakov and his colleagues, often called neopatristic theologians, actually devoted much less attention to social and political theology than Bulgakov and other members of the Russian religious renaissance of his generation. Recently, however, social and political theology has again become more prominent among Orthodox theologians. The last area that I want to talk about is what is sometimes called the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. An important problem here is the reconciliation of two divine qualities. First, divine justice, which suggests punishment for human evil doing, with the ultimate punishment being the eternal damnation or hell or separation from God. The second quality is divine forgiveness and mercy, which suggests that in the end, all humans will acknowledge God, recognize and regret their sins and enter into eternal bliss. From the early centuries of Christianity, both strands of thought had their supporters, and they still do. A third approach is to consider that salvation of all, or universal salvation, which I've just described, is not a certitude, but rather the hope and prayer of the church. Bulgakov come down, comes down strongly on the side of universal salvation. He advances powerful arguments to support this theology, such as the incompatibility of eternal punishment with no hope of re rehabilitation for sins committed in time 
and whose effects are not eternal. Another argument that he uses is that God did not create rational creatures for punishment, but for love and bliss. The contemporary Orthodox theologian David Bentley Hart draws on Bulgakov's theology as a strong Orthodox proponent of the theology that all shall be saved, which is the title of his powerful book on this subject. So in conclusion, eight decades after his death, Sergei Bulgakov's stature as a major Christian theologian is not yet adequately recognized. I think that the English publication in recent decades of his major works, together with others in the translation pipeline and publication pipeline, will go a long way to the recognition of his rightful place in Orthodox theology and indeed in Christian theology as a whole. Thank you. So here we have a, uh, a quite a remarkable photograph uh, taken in December 1933 of uh, Father Sergius Bulgakov in the apartment of Lev Zander in Paris. And the occasion uh, of this was a seminar that Bulgakov gave at the apartment of his friends with really the, the sort of orthodox uh, intellectual elite of Paris at the time. The subject of Bulgakov's talk was austerity and culture, and attending were many of the leading figures uh, of the, I said, this orthodox uh, intellectual elite in Paris. So Bulgakov is seated uh, on the left, and next to him are Mother Maria Skoptsova and uh, Julia uh, Reitlinger, uh, the future sister Joanna Reitlinger, a well-known iconographer. Sitting on the floor from the left, uh, Valentina Zander, uh, who's well known for her biography of Saint Seraphim of Serov. And next to her are Mother Evdokia and Alexandra Obolenskaya, the future <coughs> Mother Blandina, who were the first two nuns at the Monastery of the Mother of God at Bussy Anot, one of these early uh, Orthodox monasteries in France. So others in the group that I won't name here include uh, prominent theologians, philosophers, uh, historians, many of whom were uh, teachers at the St. Sergius uh, Orthodox Institute. As I said, it's, it's quite a remarkable uh, photograph for the time. If you look very closely, you see how formally uh, everyone is dressed. I mean, this kind of uh, intellectual uh, exchange uh, was were considered very formal. Uh, occasions so people uh, dressed up for them. So I hope you'll uh, enjoy uh, looking at this uh, photograph with all of these, these remarkable uh, figures from the 1930s in, in the same room, in the same place, uh, listening to Sergius Pogakov.